do you know what is ice cold? Fireball. charger got a car mount here so I don't have to hold my phone while I'm driving anymore facts texting and driving makes you 23 more times more likely to crash yeah yeah I guess that's true I'll take that into the car and assemble it later set up there we go so I guess I did it right there's supposed to be some button in there that I was looking for and I couldn't find it but you know I she's locked in place I'm talking to you I've got my car charger which I can oh I see I'll have to adjust this do that and put the car charger in and then we'll be good to go. Look at that. Nice. All right, in we go again. Look at this, this time I got the hands-free set up. Pretty happy that I didn't kill anybody while I was holding my camera, driving around for the last couple weeks or so. So that's a, that's a positive thing, you gotta look at the positives. So yeah, I'm heading in for another session. It's uh, Thursday today, and uh, as you can see, I think the weather is fucking beautiful. So I'm gonna go try putting some hours right now and then go play basketball and then probably edit this video. But yeah, I'm really happy with the purchase I made. Got it off Amazon, set it all up, uh, and uh, I think this is gonna be good. It's definitely an improvement on what I was doing. Just holding the camera like right here on the steering wheel. And... You know, almost killing people. As I'm sure you can see, it's still light out, and I am back in the car, <laughs> driving, which means one of two things. It means either the game broke, or it means that I hit my stop loss. Unfortunately, it is the latter. I played for two hours and 45 minutes. And I lost 
$745. I think what I'm gonna do now is go home and uh, look at my graph. Look at my poker graph. I don't know who it was that it was a, on a poker, it might have been, might have been another vlog, or a poker, it was a poker show of some kind, and someone asked the question, what do you do when you've had a bad session, uh, how do you kind of try and put it behind you, how do you try and put it out of your mind, and the person's response, I wish I could remember who it was, the person's response I thought was really good, which was, and it's something that I'd never really thought of before, is to uh, go and have a look at your poker graph. Look at your long-term result, as opposed to, you know, this little blip in the radar that you're so concerned with at this point in time. Go and look at your long-term result and see that, you know, it's just a blip. So I think that's what I'll do. The other thing I just want to talk about was the stop loss, which I mentioned. So that's something that I personally implement. A stop loss is basically a predetermined amount, an amount that you determine before you go in and play, that you would be willing to lose before you get up and leave the table. So for me, mine's currently set at $800, which is four buy-ins at the game that I regularly play, one, two game. So what happens is, if I lose $800, I'll stop playing. I found it to be actually really useful. I see some people that'll get in games way deep and uh, won't be playing the A game. For me, I think once I've lost four buy-ins, I'm just, my mind's probably not right at that point in time and I'm not capable of playing my A game after I'm in the hole that much. So instead of trying to claw it back while I'm not playing my A game, why don't I cut it there take the loss and come back the next day with it out of my mind at the end of the day the more hours that you put in at the table when you're playing your A game the more profitable you'll be the more hours you put in while you're playing your C game the less profitable you'll be it's kind of a it's kind of simple equation really but anyway so it was a tough lot it was a really tough day today but we'll be back. It's now Monday, 21, 21st of May. Anyway, I just realized I never did a recap of my Saturday night session. On Saturday, I played for nine hours, so it was a really long session. It was a profitable session. I made $245 overall, but it was super swingy. At one point, I was up about a thousand, and then I proceeded to lose pretty much most of that back. Kind of how the session went if you were to graph it. Up 400, up 100, up 600, up 200, up 1000, finally up 200. At no point was I in the red, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, the session was overall, didn't really play my best, but played well enough to book a profit and uh, we'll take it. 
I'll be totally honest, it hasn't been the greatest month for me in terms of, of card playing. I feel like I'm really lacking a little bit of focus. Uh, I just haven't been playing as good as I know I'm capable of. What it probably has to do with is the fact that Vegas is coming up and I know that I'm going to be playing long hours there. And so I'm kind of struggling or lacking a little bit of motivation to play here in Portland before I get going to Vegas. I guess I'm not too concerned about it because I'm kind of viewing it as me not wanting to burn myself out before I hit Vegas and uh, I'm sitting at the felt for hours and hours and hours on end. Just been kind of focusing on other things. I guess editing the vlog videos as well has been keeping me busy. I'm not too sure how I'm going to balance that and playing in Vegas. I feel like the videos may suffer a little bit but I don't want them to just because I'll have less, less hours to do it but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Tee shot. Dog marks the spot. This is the first birdie opportunity. In my disc golfing career, right here. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Right here. There's the hole. Don't be a choker hunters. Oh, buddy! Ship it to daddy! Just a little 